A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Take with your words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all iniquity, and receive what is good that we may render as offerings the bullocks from our stalls. Assyria will not save us, nor shall we have horses to mount. We shall say no more, our God, to the work of our hands, for in you the orphan finds compassion. I will heal their defection, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I will be like the dew for Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth its shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like Lebanon cedar. Again they shall dwell in his shade and rise and rise grain and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine and his fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I am like a verdant cypress tree. Because of me, you bear fruit. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord, and them the just walk, but sinners stumble in them. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. An unfamiliar speech I hear. I relieve his shoulder of the burden. His hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called, and I rescued you. Unseen I answer you in thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, you will not hear me. There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any alien God. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. If only my people would hear me, and Israel walk in my ways, I would feed them with the best of wheat, and with honey from the rock I will fill them. Dominus Vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Marcum. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. Verbum Domini God loves us more than we can imagine. His love is beyond our comprehension and our imagination. His love is limitless. There are no ends. God is love himself. And the Lord our God gives us his love and calls us to love as he loves. And Jesus says it very clear in the first, in the, in the two great commandments. He says, the Lord, love the Lord your God and him alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And then he says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now this could be very difficult. It's hard to love at times, especially those who have hurt us. But yet, God gives us this love, and he gives it to us freely. And to love as God loves, we must have an encounter with divine love. And it's just not one encounter, but it's several, and it's daily, and it's all the time that we should be encountering the divine love of God. We can experience this divine love, His grace, when we pray our personal prayers or in the sacramentals. But divine love is given to us most powerfully in the sacraments of the church, beginning at baptism, because it's right there at baptism when we enter into the mysteries of the life of Jesus Christ receiving from the Holy Spirit divine life and divine love. And we experience divine love most powerfully here in the Holy Liturgy, you know, because it's, it's Jesus who makes himself present to us. In the Word of God, in the Eucharist, through the priest, Jesus is here present to us, and he's ready and willing to give his love to all those who are open to it. But there are times when, when we distance ourselves from God and from the church, and we let other things get in the way. We make for ourselves gods, small gods. Sometimes this comes in the form of, of lukewarmness, laziness, also perhaps in, in relationships or, or being in company with people who are of, of sinful character and, and, and yet we allow them to influence us too much. But today, wherever we're at, God calls us back. He calls us closer to himself and he calls us to experience this divine love with open hearts. Today in the first reading, we hear about Hosea. And this is the last chapter of Hosea. But Hosea the prophet, he was, was a prophet of great love. And he spoke very well 
of the love of God. The story of Hosea begins with his telling of his own uh, relationship with his wife. She was an unfaithful wife to him. But yet, even though she was unfaithful, uh, she, was, uh, she was like a prostitute, he still loved her, and he still saw hope in their relationship. And so Hosea compares this, this married relationship of his to Israel and to Israel's relationship with God. You see, Israel had distanced itself from the Lord. It had made other gods and put other gods before the Lord our God. It was like a prostitute going here and there and everywhere instead of to the one Lord God and Father. And this is, this is why Hosea makes the comparison here. He says, Israel, you are like an unfaithful spouse. You have broken the covenant with God. And this is a message throughout the book of Hosea. But yet, even more powerfully than Hosea, who, who still loved his wife, who still, who, who still went out after her to renew their marriage bond, God, too, does this even more powerfully and more lovingly. He goes after Israel, calling Israel back. And God, and though Israel broke the covenant, God did not break the covenant because the Lord is faithful. And even though they were not faithful, he still remains faithful. And so at the end, at the end of the book, the Lord calls out to Israel again through the prophet Hosea, saying that he will bring restoration and that there is hope in him that he will give Israel life. And he mentions various symbols of life. He says, he talk, speaks about the dew, the dew that falls from trees. He speaks about uh, vines and trees. And, and what, what is meant by this is God's life-giving graces, his outpouring of divine love that sustains our life in him. And so today, Jesus the Lord, Jesus the Lord says the same to us, those of us who have gone astray. And I'm not just, not, I'm not just talking about those who haven't been to church in a while, but also those who sit in the pews every Sunday. You know, there, there's sometimes when we, we can come to church every Sunday, we're meeting our obligation, but yet, we could profess the Lord with our lips, but our hearts could be far from him. Jesus the Lord gives us an invitation today. Receive all of me. Give your entire self to me, your whole heart. And what are the promises? This divine life, this divine love that we receive from the sacraments of the church. And some of us out there have left the church. We have the fullness of truth, the fullness of grace here in the Holy Catholic Roman Church. And to go out there, to, to go out there because the, the Word of God is, is just so more energetic and practical that we have to go to some other church, evangelical community, because we think we're not getting it here. We have all of it here. Why just settle for a piece when you could have the whole here in the Catholic Church. And we experience this here most powerfully in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. All we need to do is come here to be present with an open heart, to say, Lord, here I am, minister to me. So we open our hearts, we listen to God. And then in listening to the Lord, we, we, we say to ourselves, where do I need to improve? How do I need to amend my life? And then we offer this with our other prayers to the Lord during the offertory, saying, here it is, Lord. And then we approach 
Jesus himself, his body and blood, and we receive his love, his, in the Holy Eucharist, we are nourished once again with this divine life and divine love. There's so much God gives us here. And let's not let any other gods distract us from what God gives us here. And he gives it in great abundance. But we need to stay open, open hearts. Don't settle for second best when you've got the best here. And the church teaches us that here in the Holy Liturgy, we experience a fountain, a fountain of life, which is the source and summit of our faith. It is, it, it is like a channel of grace, a fountain. And Jesus, Jesus says that, you know, this, this, this fountain of grace, this is like waters flowing. And, and, and Christ speaks about this many times in the Gospels, that I will give you living water, which is his grace. He gives it to us freely. So let us take it. And though, yes, maybe we've distanced ourselves. Maybe we've been a little cold or, or, or lukewarm. But it's time to come back. Jesus receives us back to confession. You know, there, there's nothing that delights the priest more that, that, of course, pleases God more and all the angels in heaven when a sinner repents and turns from his ways. And yes, in the confessional, too, we are made new again by our encounter with Jesus Christ, by his grace that transforms us. We are made new again. So Christ today gives this invitation to all of us an invitation for more of his love, more of his life, an invitation to enjoy and live the mysteries of the life of Jesus Christ. And just like he says in the prophet Isaiah, uh, Hosea, okay, he will wash it clean. The covenant still stands. That was the old covenant. We now live in the new covenant. And God is faithful. He will regenerate us through his grace, bring us back to life and health in him. And it here, it here, he's here waiting for us. He's all around us. So repent, come to God, seek his love, seek an encounter with his love daily. And of course, in our personal prayer, in, in our own spiritual readings, but most importantly, in frequent reception of the sacraments. God be with you. In the desert of Lent, we learn of our need for God and our need for repentance. Therefore, let us approach the Father with humble and contrite hearts. For church leaders, that they may continue to encourage us by their own words and actions to grow in faith, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That the Holy Spirit of love may grant mutual forgiveness and reconciliation between nations, families, and individuals, we pray to the Lord that the people of God may exercise the love and mercy he desires us to show to the weakest members of our community. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions of all who have asked for our prayers, that the Lord in his mercy assist them in their need. We pray to the Lord. For the work and mission of EWTN, through it may the world hear the good news and find hope. We pray to the Lord. For Mother Angelica and her needs, we pray to the Lord. That those who have died may overcome darkness in order to reflect the light of eternal glory, we pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, through this season of Lent, touch and heal our hearts, that we may more generously respond to your invitation to conversion and holiness. 
we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be you now forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, Look with favor, we pray, Lord, on the offerings we dedicate, that they may be pleasing in your sight and always be solitary for us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Robert, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Her ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso est ibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti in unitate Spiritus Sancti omnis honore gloria Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audee musticere.
Liber nos quasimus domine, ab omnibus malis da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordia tua aduci, et a peccato simus sempre liberi, et ab omni perturbazioni securi, expectantes viatem spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri Jesu Christi. Domine Jesu Christi, qui dix sixti apostolis tuis pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam do vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidium ecclesiae tuae, eam quem que secundum voluntatem tuam pacificaret, co adunare digneris, qui vivis sed regnas in secula seculorum. Pax Domini sit sempre ad vobiscum. Et cum spiritus tuo. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tolit peccata mundi, beati qui acenem agni vocanti sunt. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament,